All right, well, let's jump right into this class trial. During the class trial, you will present your arguments for who the killer is and vote for who done it. The if you vote things, correctly, then only the blackened will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong person, I'll punish everyone besides the blackened. And that person will earn the right to leave this island. I'm sure you guys are starving by now, but let's get revved up and raring to go. Whoever survives will be treated to a fancy lunch. Guess what? Rabbit curry is on the menu. Huh? I'm not the main ingredient, right? I'm here today because Coach Nekomaru risked his life to protect me. I'm going to be the one who avenges him. I'll definitely find out who the killer is. I'm definitely not tempted by curry. Got it? Uh, Akane, you seem to have an impressive amount of drool flowing from your mouth. Hey, why don't we try going over the incident? We weren't able to leave Strawberry House, so I want to make sure we get a detailed understanding. Um, I discovered Nekomaro's body a little before 7 a.m. I headed over to Grape Tower for Monokuma Taichi and found the body there. Hajime and Chiaki were also with me. Hajime was... with Miss Sonia and Chiaki that early in the morning? Don't tell me you three were together since last night! Imbecile! I am not some woman with flexible legs! <laughs> uh, of course you're not! You're much classier than that! With legs like those, I could probably do the splits real easy. We just happened to run into each other on the first floor of Grape House and went to the tower together. And then, the three of us discovered Nekomaru's body. The body discovery announcement was made soon after. A we heard the body discovery announcement too, from Strawberry House, obviously. As I recall, we found out the elevator was out of order, which left us stuck. So we decided to go to the tower for the time being and headed for Strawberry Hall. But someone even broke Strawberry Hall's door button. We couldn't go anywhere because of that. Thinking we should at least find some method to communicate, we set our sights on the lounge telephone. Forget these boring intros. Let's talk about the killer. Anyway, it's definitely someone from Strawberry House. What do you mean, definitely? There's no way a chick would kill someone so cruelly. So it must be one of you Strawberry House dudes. One of you better hurry up and confess, or I'll break all of you in half! You're the cruelest one here! Now, now. Enough with the lover's quarrel. We need to think about this seriously. We don't have the luxury of discussing irrelevant things. The incident this time has many questions. The incident notwithstanding, I also have many questions. Then let's start with something even Miss Sonia can understand. The weapon. Huh? Well, the weapon is obvious, right? Huh? What the heck, you guys? The weapon! You can totally tell just by looking! You can tell what the weapon is just by looking. It wouldn't be much of a mystery if that were true. The only thing at the crime scene that looked like a weapon was probably... Well, obviously, Justice Hammer number 10. Uh, <laughs> but there's no way that... That didn't kill him. I guess we should figure out the weapon first. The weapon was right there at the scene of the crime! That pillar, huh? No, the hammer! The killer used that hammer... ...and beat the crap out of him! If it was unexpected, I suppose that is possible. That's right! It was a surprise beating! The weapon is decided! Yeah, no, I think the hammer in the tower is a weapon, like he said, that's the case, but... I guess we should figure out the weapon first. The weapon was right there at the scene of the crime! That pillar, you huh? Can obviously no, the, tell. the killer used that and beat the crap out of him! Like, it's either that or the wire. Damn it! Uh, because the pillar I guess we he should hit his figure out the weapon. Pillar, the weapon was the right there. That pillar. No, the hammer. The killer used that hammer and beat the crap out of him. Damn it! Because he didn't. He I guess we should didn't. figure out the weapon first. 
The oh, weapon was right there. That killer. That. No, I'm the dumb. hand. The killer used that and beat the crap out. No, that's wrong. I am dumb. Confirmed. No, I can't accept that that hammer was the murder weapon. Why not? Why can't you accept it? A lot of oil was flowing from Nekomaru's body. Just like human blood, right? If the hammer was used to beat Nekomaru, you'd expect some oil to be on it at least. But that hammer was clean. So that's why you can't accept that it's the murder weapon. Well, yeah, but the killer might have wiped off the oil later. Why? Well, obviously, to make the hammer look like it's not the murder weapon. Then why bother cleaning the oil? If they didn't want it to look suspicious, they would have discarded the hammer. You're pretty insightful, baby gangsta. Baby gangster? Me? Just so y'all know, I was trying to test you guys. I thought, maybe you guys mistook the hammer for the weapon or something. It seems that was a waste of time. Then what was the real weapon used to murder Nekomaru? That's the problem. There wasn't anything else at the crime scene that looked like a potential weapon. Then, how about we look at it from a different angle? If it doesn't have oil on it, it's not the weapon. So whatever has oil on it must be the weapon, right? The actual weapon has oil on it. But if it's something at the crime scene that had oil on it, then it was... I oil. see! The only thing with oil on it is that broken pillar. Then that pillar is the weapon! Coach Nekomaru got clobbered with that pillar! Well, no, we... Nobody could withstand a blow from that pillar. Even if you used 100% of your muscle strength, it would be impossible to wield it as a weapon. Why? We tried to move it, right? It's no use, it's barely budging. Didn't I tell you? Yeah, that pillar was pretty freaking heavy. But there's one dude who could have lifted that pillar. Huh? Who are you talking about? Coach Nekomaru's robot body! With that dude's super strength, lifting a pillar would be real easy. So, he lifted the pillar, and then what? Did he use it to beat himself? You mean, Nekomaru killed himself? Don't be stupid! He ain't the type to commit s Then even if Nekomaru could have lifted that pillar, it has nothing to do with the case at all! Well... What the heck?! <laughs> but it does bother me a little. The word Oh yeah. It's like what Nagito said. By the way, the fourth murder of the killing school life was apparently ruled as Huh? No. That shouldn't matter. There's no way Nekomaru would commit That's a problem. If it's not the pillar, then there's no other weapon we can think of. Um, there may be a way to use the pillar as a weapon without lifting it. Huh? For reals? Yes, for reals. I see. So my gut was right after all. All right, it's up to you, Sonya. Prove that pillar was the murder weapon. Understood. Then I shall give it my all. Sonya, here I go! Okay. I guess. There's no need to lift that pillar. The pillar was not lifted. Beating him with it is beyond a dream. What about tipping the pillar over? That's true. They aimed right for his head and bullseye. Even I could probably tip it over. Considering the pillar's weight, it probably exerted a ton of force. Sonia, you go, girl! <laughs> I'm getting hella excited! The killer murdered Nekomaru by tipping it over. Is that really it? What about tipping the pillar over? No, that's wrong! I guess that makes sense. Hmm. If Nekomaru was crushed by the pillar, then there should have been fragments on top of his body. Huh? Fragments? Ah, yeah, that's true. The there pillar were no fragments were scattered on. beneath Nekomaru's body, but there weren't any on top of his body. If the pillar had been tipped over and crushed it, the fragments should have been on top of this body instead. I briefly considered that too, but it's probably not what happened. 
I, I see. That was entirely my bad. If they didn't tip it over, then how did the killer murder Nekomaru with that pillar? How much longer are you going to focus on the pillar? Just let it go already. There, there's no way I can let it go. I'm positive that Nekomaru was killed by that pillar. Why are you so certain about that? I just have a feeling. A feeling, huh? That's just your instincts. But we can't say for sure that that instinct is wrong, can we? There's another way to use that pillar to kill. You guys just haven't noticed it. Is that true? Then I shall ask you, what way is that? You guys, the same as usual. You're unable to clear a path to the future with your own powers. So you just stand there and falter. What a waste of talent. And you all intend to fight the future foundation? You make me laugh. What did you say? Regardless, it's not like I want to die with the rest of you. So I guess I should lend a hand. <laughs> God, he's the worst. Hey, Nagito. What the hell happened to you? How come you're not talking like a lunatic anymore? I've learned a valuable lesson. Ignorance is by far the greatest shame. Huh? What do you mean? Who cares? Just tell us how the pillar was used to kill! Well... First of all, the pillar itself is not enough. But when combined with a specific item, there's a way it could be possible. A specific item? Of course, the ultimate weapon. The ultimate weapon? Isn't that the thing you get when you clear the final dead room? So, Nagito knows what the ultimate weapon is? Of course I know. But I'm pretty sure everyone else has seen it, you know? We've seen it? That's right. You've seen it clearly. Because I, the one who has claimed dominion over evil, am the ultimate weapon! It... Is that a confession, or is that just him, like, being stupid? I am he who cuts the insolent catalyst which flows out from the chaos with the sword of victory! It's only fitting that I deserve to be called the ultimate weapon! No, you are far greater than the ultimate weapon, since you wield your four dark devas of destruction. I, I see. I don't know why, but I'm not liking this. What's going on here? Cut the bullshit and say it clearly. What is the ultimate weapon? Okay, but if they've all seen it, and not everybody's been to the dead room, what could it... In order to clarify that, we first need to solve the secret of the funhouse. Huh? The secret of the funhouse? You still don't realize it? Jeez, get it together. You're supposed to be the symbols of hope, aren't you? Ah, I forgot. Except for Hajime, of course. Except for Hajime? If we make it out of this, I'll explain it to you guys. Anyway, we must first <laughs> clarify the secret of the funhouse, right? Then I think it must have something to do with the structure of the funhouse. Oh, right, because we never actually... Strawberry house leads out? to Strawberry Tower, and Grape House leads to Grape Tower. But in actuality, they are both the same building, and both houses are linked to the Central Tower. It is undeniable that such a sweet building structure is the secret of the funhouse! Man, not only does that make perfect sense, but Miss Sonia's beautiful voice is just so soothing. Faux show! I shall leave this matter to your discretion. The two houses are connected to the tower in the middle. I thought that at first, too, but... I ended up finding proof that completely contradicts that. We did? In truth, Strawberry Tower and Grape Tower are actually the exact same place! So that's the secret of the funhouse. Is that really it? It's weird to say they're both the same place. I mean, the walls are different colors. And the designs on the floor are also different. We've already settled this problem. Hmm. Give it 10 years before you argue with Miss Sonia. 
So time we've been thinking the two tires are the same fuel base, but if that was the only mystery, there's no way Nagito would mention it here. In truth, Strawberry Tower and Grape Tower are actually the exact same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's wrong. Because they're. When did we figure this out? Though? I don't Both remember. Of those towers. Are they really the same place? Why are you asking that now? Do you harbor a grudge because my kingdom destroyed your homeland? Uh, Hajime, I won't tolerate any sort of rebellion. I mean, doesn't it seem strange? When we went to Grape Tower from Grape Hall, Nekomaro's body was in front of the door to Strawberry Hall. But when we went to Strawberry Tower from Strawberry Hall, his body was in front of the door to Grape Hall. It's probably some kind of trick, like the floor rotating 180 degrees or something. If it is, then see? That means it could have passed as the exact same place, right? If so, then what? Do you seriously think such a simple answer is the correct answer? Does that mean he's wrong? Oops, I guess I've said too much. If the floor didn't rotate, then that means we need to think about the structure of the building again. Bow down! Oh. I see. Then how about this? Somebody moved Nekomaru's body. While we were moving from Grape Tower to Strawberry Tower? But we should have all been together during that time. Even if they tried to move the body inside the tower. Then Monokuma did it. While we were moving, Monokuma quickly moved things around. But Nekomaru's body wasn't the only thing moved. Are you saying the broken pillar was moved too? If it is too heavy to carry, let them roll it. Just like if there is no bread, let them eat cake. That saying's weird because cake was also, like, sold in bakeries. <laughs> There are many different ways. The body and the pillar could have been moved. The pillar could have been rolled. And Nekomaru could have been moved piece by piece. I decree it was Monokuma's doing. Oh my god, dude, the cuts. Moving the body and the pillar in such a short time. That might be hard even for Monokuma, don't you think? It seems you have forgotten. Monokuma is surprisingly strong, wielding the power of the pillar of the body, everything could have moved it all, easy as pie! Oh, wait. Okay. It seems you have forgotten. I actually heard that. Monokuma is surprisingly strong, wielding the power of the feet, the pillar of the body, everything at the Allow me to cut through those words! I... Wow. I had, I had L brain for a Moving second the there, body bro. And pillar is possible. That was crazy. But it would have been impossible to move the oil on the floor. Huh? When the position of Nekomaru's body and the pillar changed, the oil surrounding his body moved too. Physically moving all of the oil like that is simply not possible, no matter how you look at it. Then it's impossible to think it was moved. I am, I am terribly sorry. I cannot believe I got so fired up. Yeah, Sonya, what are you thinking? It's all right. A fired up Miss Sonia is awesome to watch! So what really happened? Does that mean the two towers aren't the same building? Hmm... We can't be certain of that either. Not when the experiment involving the handbook I left on the tower floor was a complete success. Yeah, the e-handbook was still there. That's why we thought the two towers were the same building. If they're not the same building, or two different buildings, then what are they? Hmm... Hmm. No idea, huh? This mystery ties into the secret of the funhouse. But we don't have enough clues to solve that mystery. Then, the only thing we can do is rely on the one person who has those rules. Or clues. Hey, Nagito. I thought it would come to this. I knew my turn was coming up. Fine. Tell you guys a big hint that can help you solve the secret of the funhouse. Hopefully it's whatever he saw out the window, because I, I'm mad that they didn't show us. Give us the answer, not a friggin' hint! But then it wouldn't mean anything. I need you guys to do this class trial properly. It's also important for me because it will help me... 
determine something. Determine? Is he talking about the traitor? If so, why did Nagito say that all of a sudden? Did something happen to him? But how do we know your hint is any good? It's suspicious that you're the only one who knows it. I have a good reason for that. The reason I'm the only one who knows it is because I was the only one who performed the appropriate action. He performed the appropriate action in order to learn the secret. Could he be talking about the life-threatening game? I see! Oh, even the killer You're talking do it. about the final dead room, right? You cleared hmm. the life-threatening game there and found something, didn't you? That's right. The hint is what I saw after I cleared it. In the depths of the final dead room, there was a hidden room surrounded by concrete. Oh wait, no. Whoever cleared it got the hammer from in there, so yeah, he's one of two people, maybe more. And there, a small conspicuous window waited, all by itself. From that window, I saw some very strange scenery. Strange scenery? Instead of explaining it, it might be faster just to show you. At an opportune time, I found a perfect camera in the final dead room. You took a picture? Yep. Nagito grinned creepily as he retrieved a small digital camera from his inner pocket. See? This is it. And as he said that, he showed us a peculiar picture. Let me explain it to you again. I took this picture on the first floor of Strawberry House, from the secret room within the final dead room. But don't you think it's weird? If the Funhouse's structure is what you guys have been thinking, then there's lots of things that don't make sense in this picture, right? Lots of things that shouldn't make sense in this picture. Then let's begin. Shall I call it... Thinking time? What doesn't make sense in this picture? Well, there's a tree line on the first floor. We're, we're literally above the Here. tree line. That's crazy. You said this photo was taken from the hidden room inside the final dead room, right? If that's the case, then that means it should have been taken from the first floor of Strawberry House. Yeah, it should have been. Then, this is definitely strange. This photo doesn't look like it was taken from the first floor. The angle suggests it was taken from higher up. I see. And is that it? Nagio said there were lots of things that don't make sense in this photo. Which means there are other contradictions contained in it. Hmm. What doesn't make sense in this picture? Still just a tower. Here! Skyline? What? If the structure of the fun house is what we thought it was, Grape House and Strawberry House should link to the tower in the middle, which means if you're viewing the tower from Strawberry House, you should see Grape House behind it. But in this photo, I don't see anything behind the tower. No shadow, no shape, no Grape House at all. That's right. Good call. In summary, this is the truth contained in this photo. The first floor of Strawberry House is located in a high area, and Grape House is not behind the tower. It's not? Are you saying that Grape House is merely an illusion spell cast by Monokuma's cursed eye? From this point on, do your own thinking. Now that you've finally met the same requirements as me, Okay. If you guys are truly symbols of hope, you can easily solve a simple mystery like this. It might be possible for Hajime to solve it too, even though he's just a normal high school student. Well, now I think I know how they killed Nekamaru, but I don't know who killed him. Despite the fact that you don't have a real talent, you already know about the other clue. The other clue? 
talking about that one time? Well, hello there, Hajime. N Nagito, what are you doing here? Because I showed up. You showed up? How, how do you even come here? Maybe I teleported. You're referring to when you suddenly appeared on the second floor of Grape House, right? I'm asking you just to be safe. At the time, where do you think I came from? The top floor, right? Such sharp eyes. So you realized it already. The top floor. So the third floor? But the Monokuma Archive should be the only room on the third floor of Grape House. What does it mean? Is that thing just now another hint to figure out the mystery behind the Funhouse's structure? The reason Nagito appeared from the third floor. Using the photo you took, I might be able to find the answer if I just think about it. Alright, let's do this. Personally. Okay, so I think I know how they killed killed him. But I don't know uh what they use or like I don't know who it was. So because okay, doorknob missing, wire wrapped around his body, and obviously the whole building is like an elevator now, I guess. Oh, okay. Sick. Uh yeah, and the whole bu building's like on top of each other so they just kind of hung him on top of that and then like dropped him over it i guess somehow they dropped him i don't know but yeah who did it Like, these these ones are make sense and they're easy, but a lot of the other ones sometimes don't make any sense whatsoever. Should be vertically. Yep. It's only bad if I don't know horizontal and vertical, the differences. It's all coming together! Got it. I know the secret of the funhouse. Then let me hear it. What kind of answer will you give, I wonder? In the picture Nagito took from Strawberry House, I didn't see Grape House at all. So where did Grape House go? There is only one possibility. It was in a position where it couldn't be seen from Strawberry House. Which means Strawberry House and Grape House are in the same building, but on different floors. Same building? Different floors? Then, the two houses aren't two different three-story buildings. They're actually one six-story building? If you think about it like that, based on Nagito's picture, it's clear where Strawberry House is located. Where Strawberry House is located. Uh, the, the floor's above. I see! On top of Grape House. Yep. Yeah. Because of that, the photo taken from the first floor of Strawberry House was at a high angle. Altogether, this means the first floor of Strawberry House is also the fourth floor above Grape House. Oh, snap! I never expected that the two houses were connected vertically! But... what about the shape of the building? The two houses were completely different shapes! Um... Strawberry House is four-sided, and Grape House is six-sided, right? It never occurred to us that they were the same building because it was structured with two different shapes. A quadrilateral and a hexagon overlaid atop each other to misdirect how we would perceive them. And it worked, didn't it? Disregarding the tower, we fully believe the two houses were two separate, distinct buildings. In order to conceal the unique design of the funhouse, 
Monokuma put us to sleep so we couldn't look at the outside of the building when he brought us to it. You've just been Kumad! <laughs> Don't you think a building full of so many surprises totally deserves- Then it's true? The building was really like that? That's right! Those two houses exist on different floors in the same building! Constructing a building like that on your own without my knowledge? H how horrible! Then what about the towers? Are they arranged vertically just like the houses? Yeah, Strawberry Tower and Grape Tower should have also been different floors inside the same building. Just like Strawberry House was on top of Grape House, Strawberry Tower was also on top of Grape Tower. Now that I see the towers, like, yeah, okay, I can see that. But, yeah, However, I mean, granted, if they're different floors within the same building, why was Nekomaru's body in both places? Ah, your precious hammies don't know? But it's so simple! Alrighty then, I'll be the one who solves this mystery in a flash! Please watch me, Miss Sonia. Oh, I see. Do whatever you like. Oh, oh, definitely make her watch me! I'm gonna stand out till she notices me! She really does not like me. God. I'm gonna solve this mystery in a flash! And hurry up, dumbass! One of the bodies in one of the towers... ...was actually a dummy! Oh, are you stupid? You mean a fake body? Like, actually, Kazuchi. Nekumaru died with a mechanical body. It should be possible to construct a dummy from spare parts. No, why are you listening You're to You're magnificent, him? Gundam! <laughs> no fair! You totally stole my spotlight! So which one was the fake body? Shut up! Just pick one of them! <laughs> um... Does that mean the killer prepared it in advance? There's absolutely... well... If it's Kazuichi as the killer, maybe, but... They wouldn't be able to bring it into the tower, they wouldn't... Yeah, no, that's not even possible. I'm gonna solve this mystery in a flash! So it's gotta be... And yeah, hurry up, dumbass! One of the bodies in one of the towers was actually a dummy! No. No, that's wrong! Nekomaru's body wasn't a dummy. That can be proven by Kazuichi's account. Huh? Me? Remember? When we moved from Grape Tower to Strawberry Tower, we thought the body had moved. And that's when you said... Not just that, the parts that I carefully arranged when I disassembled the body all moved too. Right up until that moment, you were disassembling Nekomaru's body at Great Tower, right? The killer couldn't have known how you'd take apart his body, so they couldn't have built a dummy. Unless Kazuichi was the one who built the dummy, then it would be a different story. <laughs> Miss Sonia, that's a pretty harsh joke. I mean, it makes the most sense. You are joking, right? It's alright. Kazuichi is not the killer. If he was, he wouldn't have fixed the elevator or the button in Strawberry Hall. It'd be much more convenient for the killer if it stayed broken. I see. That is disappointing. Uh, uh, uh. She really doesn't like Kazuichi. Oh my god. I'm even more disappointed. Oh. However, even if Nekomaru's body wasn't a dummy, it's meaningless if we don't have the important answer. The reason Nekomaru's body was in both towers, even though it was supposed to be on different floors. Maybe it was simply moved? The body moved to a different floor? You can't think of a device like that? A device that moves things to different floors in the same building? Are we talking about an elevator? <laughs> Device like that. Device to transport things to different floors in the same. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I got it! You must be talking about an elevator. 
What? Are you saying Nekomaru's body was transported using an elevator? So basically, the... Both sides, whenever one side moves, the other side moves. So, okay. Or whenever the button's pressed, it... Oh, so it is like an elevator. Okay. But how did... But wouldn't... Wouldn't it have stopped since he's in the room, right? He would have stopped if he was in the room. Where the hell is this elevator anyway? Like, it, there would be no way for them to actually use the elevator function. So I don't fully know how they got him to hang upside down and drop him. But obviously that's that's exactly what happened because like the wire, the doorknob's broken. Uh, the way that it's like, he hit his head on the pillar, like it's cracked there's blood all over that like that's the only thing that's logically possible but i don't know how they made the elevator work since it's not supposed to work when there's like things in there like moving things it's I guess. the tower itself the inside of the tower is one big elevator which means the tower was designed so that the whole room goes up and down like an elevator oh let's go to the animation so whether you enter from strawberry hall or grape hall it all leads to the same room right so that's why we could only enter it from one side or the other. I know that you mention it. Sometimes when I pressed the door button, it took a while for it to open. I see. We were basically waiting for the room to arrive just like an elevator. Okay. <gasps> Please hold on. If the inside of the whole tower ascends and descends like an elevator... Then why is there a picture of a strawberry on the far back door when you enter from Grape Tower? Okay, that's also a very good question. And a picture of a grape on the far back door when you enter from Strawberry Tower. Because it's not projected. If the room just moves up and down like an elevator, there's no reason for the doors to change. Plus, after the incident, the far back door and grape Wait. tower had chains wrapped around it, right? The doors are just part of the wall. Okay. But when yeah, we entered yeah, yeah, yeah. Strawberry Tower, those chains were gone. Not just that, but if I remember correctly, even the doorknob was broken off. <laughs> there are too many strange things. Was that tower really an elevator? When you see people and things, make sure you focus on the good parts instead of the bad. What did you say? So, let's put aside what's changed and focus our attention on what hasn't. Why do we have to do that? It's fine. Come on. What does everything that hasn't changed have in common? The things that didn't change when we moved between the two towers. That includes the body, the pillar, and the oil. We've been talking about that stuff for a while now. There shouldn't be anything strange about them, not even the fact that they all moved with the elevator. The one thing these all have in common... They were all on the floor. I see! Okay, okay. Is it safe to say that all the items on the floor didn't change? And? And? Why did the picture on the far back door change? If you can figure that out, you'll have the answer. The reason is because... That elevator has something unique about it. There's something unique about that elevator. Uh, oh, okay. Like I said earlier, only I the floors. So that's it. The elevator was designed so only the floor moved. Only the floor moved? Which means the whole room wasn't an elevator. Only the floor was. That's why we saw different doors in each tower. Which means on the first floor of Grape Tower, the door on the far back wall had a strawberry design. And on the fourth floor, which was Strawberry Tower, a different door on the far back wall had a grape design. Then, where do the different floors lead? I want to say they lead outside, but... They're probably just for show. Just for show? Why was something like that necessary? 
so we'd falsely believe that the doors were connected to where their picture signified. It was actually very effective. Because of that, we totally misunderstood the building's structure. I don't get it. But I guess it means whoever designed this building had a totally twisted personality. Did you hear that, Monami? Don't blame this on me! Take responsibility for yourself! Uh. Then I'll take responsibility and gently caress you! <laughs> like, there's no way that's gonna happen! <laughs> Stop with the tasteless jokes! By the way, what does the chain on the far back door in Grape Tower mean? It was... Probably wrapped there by the killer to keep us as far from Strawberry Tower as possible. Why? Because of that chain. You guys thought you couldn't enter there, right? Like you said, I could probably use these parts to repair that button, but... Seriously, hold on. Even if you do repair that button, what's gonna happen to the chain on the other side of the door? Chain? The door that the door that leads to Strawberry Hall has a chain wrapped around the doorknob. Even if you fix the button on Strawberry Hall side, the door won't open as long as that chain is there. <laughs> you don't need to worry about that at all. Huh? The killer destroyed the Strawberry Hall button, so we'd stay away from Strawberry Tower. Everything was done to tamper with the evidence, so we wouldn't find out about the secret of the funhouse. The appearance of a body in the tower would contradict what we thought we knew about the building. In that situation, if we'd gone to Strawberry Tower, we'd have seen that contradiction firsthand. And using that as a clue, we might have discovered the truth. The truth that the two houses and the two towers are actually one complete vertical building. The killer wanted to keep us from learning that. That's why they made us stay away from Strawberry Tower. They destroyed the button and wrapped a chain around the door just for that? Would it really have inconvenienced the killer if we learned the true structure of the building? It would have been a major inconvenience. After all, this funhouse is strongly connected to the ultimate weapon that killed Nekomaru. Hold on. You're progressing much too quickly. There's still a contradiction concerning the building structure. Is there? What a pain. It's fine already. Gundam, please proceed. You said <laughs> earlier that Strawberry House and Grape House are connected vertically, right? If so, how does the contact elevator supposedly transport us from one house to the other? I see. Now that you mention it, I completely forgot about that matter. If that elevator moves vertically, then when your back is facing the elevator, both towers should be on the same side. But does this reflect reality? Inside Grape House, Grape Hall is on your right when your back is to the elevator. And inside Strawberry House, Strawberry Hall is on your left when your back is to the elevator. Which means the houses are on exact opposite sides of the tower. Answer me, fiend! What does this mean? What does this mean? I agree. What does this mean? If the two houses are connected vertically, the position of the tower should be the same in both houses. But in fact, when my back was facing the elevator in Grape House, the tower was on my right. And when my back was facing the elevator in Strawberry House, the tower was on my left. How could I break through this contradiction? Well, I think it has something to do with the compass, because you turn 180 degrees. Should be... I think it's Rui Hika's account. No, no, the no. two houses are connected Wait. vertically. We he could do the clocks. The elevator should move. Kazuichi. Vertically, not horizontally. Wait. Uh, wait. However, at both houses, if the contact elevator is behind you, I was trying to read that one. It was probably that one. The towers are in opposite directions. Oh, it could be that one actually. Which means your reasoning is clearly contradictory. 
Uh, What's with this iron curtain of teamwork? I'll go with Gundam's first since his is the first one. Uh, and then we'll go after Sonya. The two houses are connected vertically. The elevator should move. Vertically, not horizontally. Oh, okay. no, that's Sick. wrong. Yeah, I was like, bro, there. I don't, I don't know. Those both seem ironclad to me. The elevator wasn't just moving vertically. It was 180 degrees that it turned because Nagito had. Isn't that right, Kazuichi? Huh? Me? It, come on. You used the elevator while you were holding that compass Nagito gave you. Ah, uh, that. Yep. Yeah, it was pretty strange. From start to finish, somehow the compass needle rotated 180 degrees. Rotated 180 degrees? Meaning. As the elevator moved between the two houses, it also rotated 180 degrees. Why did they rotate? <laughs> okay. It... It was probably following the building's perimeter as it rotated to the other side. Which means the exit would be on the opposite side once you arrived at the other house, right? And thanks to that, the tower we saw on our right side when we arrived at Grape House appeared on our left side when we were at Strawberry House. An elevator that rotates while it moves. Is that even possible? It's like something from an amusement park. Oh, oh, oh guess where we're at, Yasuichi, or Fuyuhiko. Well, a fun house is an amusement park attraction, you know. And since the building doesn't really need to be structurally practical, it makes for some splendid fun. That's not splendid at all. You're inhuman. You say I'm inhuman, but I'm just a bear. I knew that so was coming. So I was never human to begin with. I knew it was coming. I'm different from these lowly humans. So we're done with the secret of the funhouse, right? Then let's start talking about the important stuff. What's the ultimate weapon that killed Nekomaru? And how'd they combine it with the pillar? Huh? You still don't know what the ultimate weapon is yet? It's what I found at the octagon, you know? What is the... Octagon, I haven't heard about that yet. Oh my... I can't <laughs> believe I have to explain that now. <laughs> He's so angry. As long as you know what an octagon means, you can solve this simple mystery easily. What's an octagon mean? Eight sided I see! If I recall, an octagon is a shape with eight sides, right? I didn't expect you to know that. For a substitute reserve course student, you're quite knowledgeable. I don't know if he's being sarcastic or not, because I think you learn what an octagon is in elementary school, so... And I'm pretty sure they're older than high school. Well, they're high school students that are older, or something. I don't know. I guess I should continue listening. Where is the place befitting of the name Octagon? Uh, the place befitting of the name Octagon, it's probably... Uh, what if we just... Here! <laughs> what, if we, what if we just obscurely pick something? You're talking about the secret room surrounded by concrete in the depths of the final dead room. Oh, Why go. is that place the octagon? You know how the four-sided strawberry house is on top of the six-sided grape house? If you cut a four-sided shape out of a six-sided one, you get eight edges. It becomes an eight-sided shape. That's basically the gist of it. I never would have gotten that. I just kind of clicked because I was like hoping for an in-between like portion. So, you know what? We'll take the it. The true identity of the octagon is that secret room in the depths of the final dead room. In actuality, that place contained various weapons. Then the ultimate weapon was there too? That's a little different. I learned the true identity of the ultimate weapon at the octagon. Learned? The true identity of the ultimate weapon is the fun house. You know, I guess that makes sense. Which means the killer used the building structure as their weapon and killed Nekomaru. Like I was saying earlier. Okay, see, we're on the right track, but like, still the elevator thing bugs me because the elevator shouldn't move when there's somebody in it, but...
Like me, the killer probably realized the secret of the funhouse from the scenery and then thought of a way to kill making use of the building structure. The funhouse itself is the weapon, so they killed using the building structure? That's why the killer tried to keep us from learning the mystery of the building. But more importantly, using the building itself as a weapon? Such a spectacular crime. <laughs> it truly deserves to be called the ultimate weapon. The funhouse is the true identity of the ultimate weapon? What does that mean? He just said it! <laughs> How did the killer use that to murder Nekomaru? And... Who is the killer who did that? Hiya! Well, hello there! I thought of a new bad word to call Monomy! <laughs> I can already tell I won't be pleased by this! And let me say it right away! I'm Mari, used to an insult and slander. There's no way I'll get hurt by a mere word. Monami is a serious Stufatly. Uh, that's more straightforward than I expected. Stufatly, huh? Tsk, tsk, tsk. <laughs> that's not it! That's not it at all. Stupid, fat, and ugly. The perfect jet stream attack incorporating all three of these would be... Ta-da! Stufatly! Ah. Ooh, what? There's a fat thing in there? Okay, everyone! All together now! Monami is a serious Stufatly! <laughs> so mean. Well, that is where we're going to end this episode, and we're going to finish up the class trial in the next one. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe, do whatever you feel, and we will see you back here on Monday. Bye!